Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and I'm a crafter from Scotland with a particular interest in the fibre arts. Um, and this is my December project updates video. Um, the past few months have been pretty busy for me. Uh, the, the whole month of December has been a bit of a disaster <laughs> for me. So I haven't had a whole bunch of time for crafting, um, which I feel like is a common theme throughout my life. Um, I'm busy doing everything but what I want as it seems. But I do have a couple finished objects that I'm really, really excited to show off. Um, first and foremost is my scrappy crochet granny stripe blanket thing. Um, yeah, I've been working on this for four years. So how this started off was my friend Gemma of the Midnight Diary. Her and I, we swapped um, scrappy advent calendars um, for December. I think the first year, I think we'd done it in 2019 and 2020. We only done it for two years. Um, I think we intended to do it after that, but um, we just kind of never got round to it. <laughs> but so we, we, um, you know, we wound up um little scraps that we had from different projects and put together little advent calendars for each other and swapped. Um I didn't know initially what I was going to be doing with mine. Um but Gemma straight away knew that she was going to be doing a granny stripe blanket. Um and I explored a few different um ideas but eventually settled on doing the exact same thing that Gemma was doing because she has good ideas. Um, so, this has, uh, the stripes we were swapping, they were, uh, you know, I think, I think the, the largest amount would have been 20 grams. Um, some of them were smaller, some of them were bigger than others, but, um, I think the largest amount that we would have swapped would have been around about 20 grams. So, there is two years, so there that would be 48 different yarns at least. There was some days where Gemma, um, in the advent that Gemma sent me, there was, you know, maybe three different yarns. Um, if it was, you know, maybe like five or ten grams um, of each or whatever. Um, so there's a whole lot of different colours in this. Um, the finished blanket is it's not super super wide um it's wider than i am um and i did add on a little border going around the full full length of the thing um i'll try and show you the length or at least give you a vague idea so we've got okay this is gonna take ages and it's quite laborious um, yeah. This, this is actually where, where I started. I started with a teal. I remember, um, that this was by an indie dyer who no longer trades. Oh! Um, Countess Ablaze. Um, they ceased trading a few years ago now. Um, yeah, so that's that was the first colour that Gemma sent me. And the teal that I used to go around the border, um, that was just some seconds um, that I had of my own hand dyed yarn. It's, the colour was lacrimose, but it was a little bit paler than I intended. Um, I've had it sitting around for a while. Initially I wanted to use well, my first thought was I was going to use black to kind of go around and make the border. Um, then once I had it kind of, you know, the main body of the work finished off, I just kind of thought black is just going to be really, really harsh and it's not going to look great. Um, I don't think it would have looked terrible, but I definitely think I made the right choice in not going for black and going for teal. Because teal... Teal goes with everything. It's it's basically a neutral. Um, 
mean, even with the red, it looks quite nice with, with the pink it looks quite nice with. Yeah, there isn't a colour that it clashes with at all. Teal is a neutral, um, for all intents and purposes. But throughout this, um, this blanket, you know, there's so many different yarns. Um, like, so this one, uh, this is Aurora Borealis by The Midnight Diary, but when they were trading under the name of The Project Bag. Um, I actually have a full skein of this, and I tried to send... Well, I didn't try and send, but I nearly sent some of this yarn to Gemma, because the, the skein I have, the ball band, is no longer on it. I was just going through my stash, um, and I seen this, and I was like, oh... I think Gemma would love this colourway, and of course she would, because she came up with it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I realised before I actually put it in the advent. Um, these two are from Gemma's, actually these three are from Gemma. This one I believe is called Myra, um, that was Speckled Eggs. And this one was Opium, and I believe Gemma's husband kind of came up with that colourway, it was his kind of idea. I could be incorrect, but the reason I'm kind of going through the colourways is that uh, that's part of why it's so special to me. Um, as you know, like, because I've worked on this for so long and it's, you know, it was swapped with a, a dear friend, um, there's so much, like, memory and sentimentality attached to it. And this colour here, um, this is Brat, um, the blue with kind of the, the speckles. This is Brat by Dye Candy, and in the first year, Gemma and I both sent each other some of this. Um, I think we have quite similar tastes in yarn, um, which works out great when we're swapping scraps. Um, but yeah, you know, th there's so many kind of memories and stories attached to this that just makes it all that more special. Um, yeah. Um, Winter is in full force here in Scotland, um, and it is cold. And I, in September, I started uh, working from home a bit more. Um, well, I'd never worked from home before then, but um, so I worked from home a little bit more. And it turns out my house is pretty cold. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I don't want to, like, <laughs> Running the heating is relatively expensive. Um, that's one of our highest bills. Um, so having this lovely, huge woolly blanket, um, it saves me having to turn the heating on. I absolutely live in this thing when I'm working from home. Um, I almost wear it as like a cardigan. Um, I just have it wrapped around me the full day. You know, and when I leave my home office to like go make a cup of tea or make something to eat, like it's wrapped around me. It doesn't come off. It's the, you know, it's almost like a dressing gown or a house coat, I, you know, I just live in this thing. Um, and it's great. I love it so much and it's so special to me. Um, I don't know... I don't know how Gemma is getting on with her granny stripe blanket. Um, I'll need to ask her actually, because I know that she did start it. Um, probably, I think Gemma started hers before I started mine. Um, in fact, I'm almost certain that she did, um, but yeah, um, I don't I don't know if she's kept uh, kept up with progress for that. Although hers is like a full size, like a, I think the width wise, it's to fit um, a double bed, if not a king size bed. It's like a you know it's a full blanket, whereas mine is a bit smaller, um, well a bit thinner anyway. Um, Lengthwise, I believe it is taller than me. Um, I probably should have measured this. Um, but does anyone is anyone that interested that they need to know the dimensions of my lovely, lovely blanket that I've <laughs> scrunched up into a ball? Um, probably not. So, moving on from that, my only other finished object um, is, again, a pretty special one, in my opinion, anyway. But this is my um, classic Pride um, self-striping sock. Um, this is my own colourway that, um, that I released during Pride Month 2022. Um, so this completes the three different Pride colours that I have so far. Um, 
I was planning on having more pride colours this year, um, but that, yeah, I ran out of time. So maybe this year, maybe this year, because um, I would love to be able to expand the range of pride um, colours that I have on auction, because there's so many different pride flags, because it's, you know, it's such a diverse kind of grouping of people that um, celebrate pride. And it's nice to be able to represent um, other people. But yeah, this is super, super neon, super bright. Um, I know that if I'm wearing these socks and I get hit by a car, that it will be entirely on, on purpose because there is no way people are missing me in these socks. Um, yeah, I absolutely love them. I started these in September and it took me until, I believe I actually finished these in November. Um, there's no need for a pair of socks to take this long. Um, it's not that I wasn't enjoying it, it's just... I don't know, things happen. Um, part of it was this. I got the idea into my head that I wanted to finish this before the end of the year. Yeah, well, I wanted to finish it before winter. And I did. Um, if you consider winter starting on the 21st of December. Um, which it does, but Scotland's cold long before the 21st of um, December. But yeah, I think I had this finished in November as well. Haven't achieved much since then with December being the hell month that it has been. <laughs> yeah, um, I just knit these the way I tend to knit socks, um, which is on 2.25 millimetre needles going from the cuff down. I do a fish lips kiss heel. Um, that is... Did I do a fish? Yeah, yeah, this is a fish lips kiss heel. Um, that's kind of my go-to mostly because I have it memorised in my head. I don't have to think about it. I can just do it. Um, but I have tried a few others that I really enjoy, um, namely the Shags socks, which I think is great for self-striping yarn because it, um, although the only time I've done Shags, which stands for Simultaneous Heel and Gusset socks, um, but I enjoy the name. Um, yeah, with with the shags, it helps with self-striping because it, if you've got a wide stripe, it's not going to break the the stripe pattern. Um, like this one kind of has. Like, I really think this is perfect. Um, but if you take the heel out, you know, you've kind of broken the stripe pattern. But, you know, there couldn't be a more perfect um, split. Like, you know, right on that heel seam. It's just, yeah perfect. Um, the other one, not so perfect, but I still love it. Um, yeah, isn't this just glorious? I couldn't have planned that even if I tried, um, using the method that I made the sock. There is ways to do it, um, deliberately, but yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, absolutely in love with these. I haven't worn them yet, even though I finished them almost two months ago. But I've been saving them because I wanted to be able to show them off before I wear them. Um, on here. So as I said that's my only other finished object and so that leaves me with whips which is also a pretty pathetic offering. <laughs> so um, the only kind of standard whip that I have is yet another pair of socks. Um, this is just some yarn by Regia that I've had sitting in my stash for a number of years. It's quite nice. Um, it's quite like outdoorsy colours um, and these I am knitting for my father. They were intended to be his, you know, a part of his Christmas present but um, today's the 30th of December and <laughs> they are not finished. Um, but I did show them to him on Christmas and I was like, y these are coming, but you'll need to wait a bit, <laughs> which was fine. But yeah, my dad's like a, um, you know, he enjoys fishing. So I think having some nice woolly socks will be quite good because even if it's freezing cold and snow, which it often is this time of year in Scotland, um, he will still be out fishing by a, a lake for several hours a day, so I imagine his feet must get absolutely freezing. So I thought some woolly socks might be nice. Um, I'm doing them the same width as my own feet, um, which I use 64 stitches. Um, but I'm doing 
probably mm, you can kind of see I'm doing a kind of broken rib so it's um it's three knit, knit stitches and a purl stitch for five rows and then I'm kind of splitting it so that the purl stitch is in the middle of the knit stitches I doubt you'll be able to see that very clearly um with the kind of different colors in the yarn it doesn't really show up this isn't really for aesthetics, um, I just wanted something that has a bit of stretch so that it will stay on. Um, I was not used to hand knit socks, I think that will be a nice thing to add in. I've just done fish lipped kiss heels on these as well. Um, again, mostly just so I didn't have to think about it. Um, this has been mostly done on buses. Um, when I've been going to work and other places. Um, so any, any other sock I would need to be looking at the pattern, which I I don't do if I'm on a bus. Um, it's, yeah, there's too many things going on on a bus as it is. Um, so yeah, hoping to get these finished off very, very soon. They could have been finished off by now. I did start these at the start of December. I can, I have knit a pair of socks in two days before. So yeah, they, these totally could have been finished, but time and willpower, energy, yeah, I didn't have enough of either of those things to do to finish these off. And the only other project um, that I have to show, I'm kind of using as a, a symbol for a greater set of projects. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's very, just being difficult here. Um, so I am crocheting this. Um, it's supposed to be a frog. Um, at some point it may be. I need to, you know, stitch some eyes and, you know, like face details on. But it's not just a frog. <laughs> it's going to be a squeaky frog. Uh, for my new dog that I'm going to be picking up in a couple of weeks. So the kind of greater set of projects is things for my dog. Um, obviously the first thing I needed to make for the dog was going to be a frog because I like frogs a hell of a lot. Um, <laughs> but I want it to be something that's quite robust and durable. Um, so I'm using some Lofi wool and I'm which is, I believe, iron weight. The crochet hook that I'm using is three millimeter. Sorry, it's it's behind me. I was just trying to see if I could see the size. So it's quite a dense fabric, um, which is why I chose to crochet because I find it a lot easier to get a dense fabric with crochet. And because this is going to be for a puppy, um, and puppies love shredding things to pieces, I wanted to make sure that everything was wool. Um, well, everything was natural anyway. Um, so it's wool on the inside. The stuffing I'm using is actually alpaca fibre. It's some... I have a hell of a lot of alpaca fibre to spin that you'll probably see a video on at some point. Um, and this is just some of the, like, guard hairs, some of the, the kind of scrappy bits that won't make a good yarn. Um, so instead of putting in the bin or composting, uh, I decided I would reuse and use it as stuffing. The reason I wanted it to be um, natural fibres, um, this is going to be, this is going to get broken. Um, this is going to be 100% destroyed by a dog. If it doesn't just some of the fibres, I would rather it was a natural fibre than a plastic fibre. But even then, it's it's more just because it's going to be disposed of at some point. So I don't want to make something out of plastic that isn't going to last. The dog will be um, playing with this under supervision, obviously. I'm not worried about it eating the insides and the squeaker. It's, yeah. Um, but it, it's more just the kind of disposability of this item. Um, I don't want, yeah. I'm not going to use plastic for something that isn't going to be around because the plastic will be around for a really long time. So I have a few other ideas of things that I want to make for the dog. Um, 
starting with a frog, I also really, really, really want to make it a, a mushroom. Because I love mushrooms and they're great. I do have this cotton, um, which I think could make quite a cute, like, kind of fly agaric mushroom with the, you know, the red cat with the white spots. That could be cute. Um, and maybe put a squeaker in the, the cap. Who knows? I did buy, I think it was 30 squeakers. Um, that seemed to be like the smallest amount I could buy. Um, I didn't really want 30, but I have 30, so uh, the dog may be getting 30 toys. At least 30 squeaky toys. So yeah. So that is my only other work in progress. I have lots planned for next year. Nothing super duper like nailed down yet. Like I want to do more weaving. Um, I have apart from like separate to all of the alpaca fleece that I have to spend that I will explain at another day. I do have I think it's 600 grams of baby black alpaca that I spun for Tour de Fleece in 2021. I think it was 2021. Uh, so 600 at round about four ply, um, which is quite a lot of yarn. I want to weave that into a scarf, uh, a huge like wide scarf, long scarf. I want to try and use up that in, entire 600 grams, which should, you know, I should be able to get a good size scarf out, out of 600 grams. Um, I should get a pretty, pretty big scarf out of 400 grams. Um, so that's one thing I want to do, is to get rid of that hand-spun um, baby black alpaca because I have a whole lot of um, alpaca that I need to process and spin. Um, I definitely want to make, uh, I definitely want to knit a sweater or perhaps a cardigan. I may have mentioned this in the last episode. I can't really remember because I did record my December updates video a few weeks ago. Um, that was, I was still a bit unwell at the time and like when I was kind of lo looking at the footage afterwards it was so flat, it was so boring because I was so tired and had no energy and like I was like nobody wants to watch this like you know. Um, so aside from crafting um, on buses I've been reading a hell of a lot the past couple of months, which I'm kind of a sporadic reader in that way that I'll like read obsessively for a few months and then I'll get distracted and forget that books exist. But I just, just in case people were interested, I thought I would share um, some of the books I've been reading. So I read Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. My surname is Vernon. That, yeah. Um, this is a, a thriller, which I'm not hugely into thrillers, um, but I was really, really glad I picked it up. Um, I think it was uh, one of the staff in the queer bookshop that I go to that recommended it. And I've never had somebody in a bookshop recommend a book to me that wasn't a great, uh, uh, you know, like, I've never not enjoyed a book that was recommended to me by somebody in a bookshop. So if somebody would recommend something, I generally just buy it. Really glad I did. Not hugely into thrillers, but I was thrilled. Um, the The last couple chapters were actually like really, really tense to the point that I, you know I would like read another paragraph and then have to put put the book down because I was just so like worked up and anxious. But then like three minutes later, I'm like, no, I need to keep going. I need to find out what's happening with this. Never been like that with a book before. Um, I would really recommend. It. I really enjoyed it. Um, after that, I read. All That's Left in the World, um, which is a post-apocalyptic young adult book um, featuring two boys who find each other in the like post-apocalyptic world um, and try to navigate that. Really lovely book, really sweet, thoroughly enjoyed it. And then the last book that I read was Wolf Song by TJ Clune, which is kind of like a it's about werewolves. I don't know. It's not usually my kind of thing, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I say we werewolves are my thing, but this is the third book about werewolves I've read this year, and 
the dog I'm packing up in two weeks is a wolf hybrid. Um, so maybe wolves are becoming my thing. I do, I do not know. Um, with a kind of occult, supernatural being things, I've always been like more into vampires than I have werewolves, but maybe that's changing. Um, this is really good. Really enjoyed it. And currently I am reading Crime by Irvin Welsh, who's one of my favourite authors. He wrote the Train Spotting series of books um, and Filth. Train Spotting and Filth are films also, and they're very good, but um, I thor thoroughly enjoy his books. And actually I believe Crime is a TV series now as well. I'm not too sure. Um, I am enjoying this, but I'm not super, not super gripped by it. I'm, I'm not a huge amount of the way through it. Um, you know, maybe like a quarter to a third of the way through it. And yeah, definitely a quarter. Nothing's really happened that yet. Um, I did read that it was kind of one of his most pulled back serious books. All of his books are pretty serious, but they're, you know, they're a bit surreal um to an extent and they're a bit like dramatic whereas this is this is like kind of more along the lines of a you know it's a um what's the word i'm looking for it's like crime it's crime fiction um which isn't generally my um my area of interest but i'm enjoying it it's well written it's ever welsh i will you know i'm i'm gonna keep keep reading it i am enjoying it I have the sequel to this as well, um, The Long Knives, um, it was in an author, it's the like, buy one get one half price or something like that, um, in Waterstones, so I picked that up and then afterwards realised it was the sequel, um, I'd just seen Irvin Welsh and I, I grabbed it because I've never not enjoyed a, a book by Irvin Welsh. Um, yeah, and then later on found out it was a sequel and I was like, okay, well, I have to buy the first book now. Which, yeah. So that's, that's kind of everything I have for you. The book thing was kind of random, but I don't know. If you're interested, you're interested. If you're not, you're not. <laughs> so a happy new year when it comes. I, for one, I'm really excited for the next year because this one's been a bit rubbish. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.